In Cali, Colombia, scientists are working on how to employ weather research to prevent cassava crops from suffering from four major pests and diseases. Cassava is a staple food around the world, from South America to Africa to Southeast Asia. RFI's Laura Angela Bagnetto spoke to one of the leading scientists on the latest research. Hello, I'd like to welcome to the program Tony Bellotti, who is a scientist at the International Center for Tropical Agriculture and one of the authors of the paper Threats to Cassava Production, Known in Potential Geographic Distribution of Four Key Biotic Constraints. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. We are talking today about cassava, and cassava is the third most important crop in the tropics, but it has four enemies. Could you tell us a little bit about that? First of all, the origin of cassava is south of the Amazon or around the Amazon region of South America. There's a large complex of different pests and diseases that are associated with the crop here in what we call the center of origin. Some of these have made their way to other continents, and one of the major ones is the cassava green mite, which has made its way into Africa. At the same time, there's the cassava mealybug, which many years ago also caused a considerable damage in Africa. Africa. And both of these pests were controlled with natural enemies that we brought in from the neotropics, from the Americas. They are still somewhat of a pest, but they're also, to a certain degree, under some kind of control. One of the other major pests is the white fly, and especially the species Demisia tabasi. One of the major problems with the white fly is that not only can it cause severe damage just through its feeding, but it can also transmit different virus diseases. And in this case, it can transmit transmit the Africa cassava mosaic disease, as well as the brown streak virus disease. You looked at these four. Could you talk to us about some of the discoveries? There's different types of models to determine what kind of climate changes we might expect in the future. Depending upon what model that you use, you could maybe get different kinds of results on this. We used about five different models and tried to use some kind of a consensus of these. Well, we have information about where these insect pests and uh, about what their life cycle is. We can then determine what would be the best environmental conditions for an increase in population of these pests, where these pests could be more severe. And the same thing with the diseases. We have the insect pest or the, in this case, the white fly or the diseases got into these regions, they could cause a lot of damage. And then if we look at what type of climatic changes we expect to occur in the future, for example, we know that in some regions it will get warmer. In other regions, the rainfall patterns might change, or you might get an increase in rainfall, or you might have an extension of the dry season. And all of these environmental factors can also play a role in the severity of any of these pests or diseases that we're talking about. For example, in South America, especially down in Brazil, what we call the Mato Grosso region of Brazil, the northern part of South America and Colombia and Venezuela is also another what we call hot spot. There's several in Africa, the Rift Valley, for example, in certain regions of Africa. And then in Asia, especially the southern tip of, uh, of India. And as you get into Southeast Asia, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, in that region also another one of what we call hot spots. The interesting thing, of course, this coincides with regions where a lot of cassava is being grown. So basically, you have determined this by looking at climate change or trying to sort of um, predict but with data how the climate changes, how you can deal with these four pests and still have people produce cassava. And also the fact that these pests might not be in some of these regions yet, okay? And so one of the first things that we recommend is is quarantine, is to make sure that all precautions are taken so that these pests are not disseminated into some of these regions. Uh, For example, the virus diseases that you have in Africa, we do not have in the Americas, and they have not reached certain parts of Asia also. And so one of the first things that we say is, okay, you need to have strict quarantine regulations and really be careful about the movement of cassava planting material what we call stakes or cuttings, okay? And that's one of the major ways that these, uh, some of these uh, pests, like, for example, the mites, 
and the diseases, the two virus diseases, they move from one region to another, from one country to another, or even from one continent to another through cassava, what we call planting material. Cassava is vegetatively propagated through stem cuttings. So basically, you are working with a very old crop, something that's been around for centuries, but you are looking at it from a 21st century perspective with climate change and also with people moving around. Cassava, as you say, it's it's a crop that was grown probably, uh, I think, something like eight to 10,000 years ago by the indigenous populations in South America. And so it's been around for a long, long time. One of the most interesting things about it, cassava was for many years seen as what we call a subsistence crop. It was a small farmer crop grown primarily for farmers' own consumption or for very local markets. And in more recent years, it's become a very much more of a uh, commercial crop. Very, very important in rural incomes in many regions. For example, here in South America, in Brazil, and definitely so in Asia and in parts of Africa. And the industry is located there also, so it provides jobs for the rural sector. So it's become not only a subsistence crop and a very important food crop, it still is, in many regions of the world, but now it's also a very important commercial and industrial crop. Thank you so much, Tony Velotti, who's a scientist at the International Center for Tropical Agriculture in Cali, Colombia. Thank you so much for joining us on our program today. Well, thank you, Lauren. Have a good day. You too. Take care.